Hi everybody, this is Nikki and I'm here to do a video that is my personal experience, not to be used as medical advice. Um, if you have a problem, call Medtronic <laughs> or call your doctor. Don't do anything based on my videos. Um, it's me just sharing my ideas, thoughts, uh, strategies, whatever. Um, but, you know, be careful what you watch on YouTube. <laughs> so, um, okay, I was, I am going to try to just do a quick demonstration on how to calculate a calibration factor um, when it's time to calibrate. And I've done about 16 videos today and they've been insane. So I'm gonna just try to do a simple one. It's not going well so far, but we'll see. Um, okay, I'm doing this because in the group, we're talking a lot about, in the Honest Exchange, we're talking a lot about calibration factor and the role it plays in determining whether or not it's a good time to calibrate. Um, there is a rule for calibrating in auto mode. Um, I don't really understand it, but Medtronic doesn't really explain this to people, but it's in their literature, so it is a rule, and that's 35%, and that is that your BG needs to be within 35% of your SG in order to calibrate in auto mode. That rule does not apply in manual mode. It just doesn't apply in manual mode. Um, there, they also mention in Medtronic, they also mention a calibration factor rule, although I can't find this in the literature and it's a little bit softer. Um, I was originally told that in order to determine whether or not it was a good time to calibrate, you wanted a calibration factor that, that fell between two and eight. That was the original number. Those were the original numbers I was given. Um, after speaking with people on the group, in the group I've heard everything from three to eight, three to 16 and three to 20. Um, I have been testing my calibration factors now for going on eight months or whatever it is, and I've never seen a 20. I did get a 17 the other day, but it was in during a failing sensor. Um, that's, to me, it's absurd. So I don't understand why, I think it's either they don't understand what the rule is, or they're just, they're not doing a good job communicating it. Um, which means that we're left to kind of figure things out on our own, and that's what I've been trying to do. Uh, what I think, and this obviously is not a rule, and as I said, be careful what you watch on YouTube and don't, go, don't try this at home. Um, I think that in auto mode, some general numbers are the range between two or three and eight. Um, I think that if you need to calibrate, it's something to consider if you want to go ahead and make sure that your range is within, your number is within, your calibration factor is within um, three and eight, say. Uh, in manual mode, it's not quite so strict. Um, I do still think it tops off at 10, but in eight months before having some faulty sensors, I almost never got a 10. So it was like, it would basically accept everything. <clears throat> um, over the last four months, it is my theory that we're getting some either bad sensors or just sensors that are carrying this inflated factor. Um, and I see a lot more tens and it makes for some potential problems. And it's, uh, it's why I personally think that so many people are having these issues with their sensors right now, that maybe everybody's getting these inflated calibration factors and you couple that with a rising blood sugar um, and now you're outside of, of good calibration range. But, um, okay, so for the demo, uh, this is what I would need to do. If it's time for me to uh, calibrate, um, what I would want to do, is I would take a blood sugar, I would take a current blood sugar, I just dropped 80, 18 test strips, um, and then I would go ahead and pull up my ISIG from my sensor status, um, and then I would divide my BG by my ISIG. Um, and so I'll do it for you and not just talk about it. I just, I was attempting this video and I knew my blood sugar was a little bit low. My Guardian was showing a 91. My Libre was showing a 67 and falling, so I knew I was definitely a little bit low, um, but I had no idea that I was a 35, which is what my finger stick read, so I'm kind of recovering from that. Okay, um, which means I'm going to have a very high factor right now as my guess, because this is gonna be my factor on eight sugar tabs. Okay, so there's my rebound. I was a 35, I'm now a 145. And there's my 113 and rising. Okay, um, now, I, I, that's my current BG is at 145. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my menu. Okay, I'm going to status, sensor, and I'm gonna scroll down until I see ISIG. 
So 16.79. So I'm at a 145 divided by 16.79. And that's an 8.65. I am completely disconnected from my pump right now, or I, I wish I could try to show, go into auto to show you how that just doesn't work. Um, but if you look, my blood sugar is a 145. My SG is a 113. 145 is within 35% of 113, but that 8.675 would give me trouble in auto mode. That's my theory. Um, I think that either it would tell me to calibrate now, it would tell me a BG required. If I tried to enter on that, it would, it would send me into the loop. Um, even though my numbers appear to be okay, there's a big calibration factor. And that's why I said, again, I think that the problem is whatever's happened over the last three or four months or however long it's been now, all of my sensors are carrying this kind of inflated calibration factor. So with a rise in blood sugar, it's pushing me up outside of that range where I can get in a good calibration. Um, I think it, this would not be true in manual mode. I could calibrate right now at an 8.65 without any problems at all. I could update this. I could pull up my 113. If I try to do it in auto mode, it would be strike one. Um, and that's it. I don't know if I did anything with this. It's been a rough hour, so I'm going to go exercise. I hope you guys have a good day, and thanks for watching. Bye.